Well, hey there, everyone, and welcome back. Another exciting day in markets on the heels of our video from last night that I hope you caught. Uh, the insights uh, that were provided were really all about the market having some downside risk today with the private payrolls data potentially coming in a little stronger. Well, they did, and uh, the equity markets uh, saw that as a reason to believe that Powell could be a little more hawkish. And our swing barometer, the S&P 500, as you can tell, is uh, uh, pulled back slightly. I'm gonna zoom in on that in just a second for you. But I want you to get the big picture view first. You know, From the entire highs of Jan 2022 to the lows in October, uh, well above the halfway marker, uh, we're in a spot where you know we have obviously taken out the highs that were made back in August, and uh, this is something that you heard Rob and I talk a lot about uh, in that yellow zone there, uh, back in the uh, March and April and May timeframe. Uh, now, all of that's history, and we are in a market where if you zoom in and take a look at the action today for the SPY on a daily candlestick chart, which is what you're looking at now, and the horizontal lines that are going across the screens with numbers on the right are pivot levels. And what you can see very clearly is that the SPY made a move down to a pivot line of support and then bounced back up and grabbed a hold of these thicker pivot lines uh, running through the uh, center of you know the entire range over here. Uh, and that's uh, important because this is an area of balance. This is an area of important support. But there's still a problem associated with uh, the technical signals as we move into tomorrow's jobs print. Now, based on how the market left the day today, there's still some potential for a little bit uh, of a dip and bounce. Uh, before uh, this uh, consternation can uh, be completely uh, overturned. But that's a fairly decent buying tail on today's candle on the SPY. Uh, obviously coming down below the 437.24 marker, making lows today at 437 and six pennies, and then rising uh, and continuing to be up in the air in the after hours. But uh, as you can see over here, into the close, we did see the SPY around the 439 and 75-ish penny marker uh, and effectively holding you know, at that bottom lip of this center of pivot range. Now, is this a sign of straight up we go? Well, the answer to that question lies in technical signals that you've heard me comment on uh, that gave you the insight last night that there may likely be some downside risk. And I pointed you very specifically to charts just like these, where we can take a look at the weekly chart first, which is, I know, a bigger time frame, but I want to get your eyes attuned to what's on screen because there's a lot going on here. So you've got member exclusive indications for wealth charters on the screen on each candle being a weekly candle. Uh, you've got Rob's life's work, his ITP and his TRP work, my triple S work, uh, and uh, all of the wealth chart member exclusive tools all superimposed on the price of the SPY. Now, what you've heard me say yesterday in a video just like this is there's some risk of us coming down and testing that slow speed line, fast speed line, was the comment that I made, the 439-ish area. It got a little hairier than that today, came down a couple of dollars below there, but obviously closing back up above. We have not yet seen a close below the speed lines in this journey up. And this journey was signaled by a TRP buy back over here on the 27th of March. And you can see how the tools progressed, inclusive of throttling on the weekly chart. Now, we are losing a little momentum, to be sure. And I'm going to take you from a weekly chart, which is still very bullish, but does also still say there may be some chance for another small dip before uh, a continuation up. There is an open target one at 448 bucks and 62 pennies, as you can see here. Is it the likely outcome tomorrow that we see a jobs print where it's not as strong as today's private payrolls and we get the dollar down and equities up? Uh, there's a potential outcome like that. But let's take a granular look at this and, and kind of reduce the time frame from that weekly time frame, where the most important insight I can provide here is if we come down below roughly 436 bucks, uh, that slow speed line there, the opportunity to come down into the champion cross buy zone down towards even the mid 420s would not be offside on a chart like this, but then very likely the chart like this also implies a bounce back up and back we go to try and make it to target one or higher. Now the daily chart that tells us that we've lost a little momentum and you can see that over you know a few trading days here. We are in a spot where the entire sum of uh, the toolkit does say we're losing bullish momentum, but we're still in a upward move. So the idea over here being price below the speed lines, and uh, of course dipping into that member exclusive indicator, the champion cross buy zone, 
it becomes a opportunity and a risk, of course. The risk is we come down, test the bottom end of the zone, perhaps perforate it, and if a bounce back up uh, is uh, what plays out, uh, it becomes a potential dip buying opportunity. Now, I'm not a registered financial advisor. I can tell you uh, what I'm thinking and show you how I uh, uh, see what uh, the market's telling me through the lens of powerful tools, uh, but you must consult yours before making any trading decisions. So some of the decisions that I made today was to lower exposure of some of my bearish trades, uh, things like uh, long volatility. Now, as I say that to you, I'm also going to reiterate the daily chart has not given us a signal that says straight up. In fact, it tells me that there's still some downside risk and we could come down potentially to a slightly lower low uh, than what was made today, the $437-ish uh, low for the SPY. Uh, now, coming down to a lower low, the logical area where there's a maximum concentration of support would be in and around the 435 area, all the way down to about the 434 area in that zone. That would be an area of more likely, if we dip down into it, that we can bounce back up. And if you go back to that weekly chart and you take a look at where the speed lines are, well, that slow speed line is at 436 and change. The top of the champion cross buy zone is at 432. And effectively, what could play out tomorrow, not what will, would be a dip and bounce if the jobs data is similar to what we saw this morning from the private payrolls. The technical signal on the four hour chart also reiterates that. We've lost the champion cross buy block down there. Okay, we lost that on the last bar, the current uh, four hour bar into the end of the day. And you can see that we're in a spot where we made a high in price, we made a higher high, and part of the wealth chart exclusive indications is this divergence tracker. It's done very uniquely and very well. And uh, I can also appear at intraday for day trading, which I'm going to be talking a little bit about both day and swing trading at the upcoming summit, which I'll invite you to in just a moment. Uh, this red line over here set up the potential for the market to pull back. And that's something that we talked a little bit about yesterday, I believe, in a video just like this, where if we're in a spot where you've got the market telling you that you got to watch your back, you're probably going to pull back to refuel and then bounce back up. Uh, well, I want to pay attention to that and, and be very clear and open with it. So we've had a pullback. We indicated likely 439 and uh, we came a little lower. And all I'm coming to you with today is the insight of I've lowered some of my bearish exposure, but I'm ready to day trade tomorrow around the jobs print in the morning. And of course, be act very active during the market morning with members of the active trader room um, on a more day trading basis. Because the overall backdrop is not one that says the market's likely to fall apart. Uh, a dip and bounce. Now a dip to a lower low, according to the four hour chart, which is by the way, not on a sell signal on the spy, but a dip to a lower low could be down in and around this territory. You can see rising support of the visual trend channel in the 435 area. And you can see a uh, part of the uh, uh, exclusive indications over here. Uh, uh, well, actually, this comes with the uh, ITB and TRP tools. Uh, this is part of the MSR toolkit. And it is sitting right over here, that blue line, that moving average is sitting around 434 bucks. So this is that area that I identified right there on the daily chart as concentration of support. It is not as clean on a weekly chart that you know, 434 or 435 holds the support, but it still puts us in a buy zone. And the idea would be, if we are to come down to that 434 to 435-ish area, a bounce up off of it in pre-market that takes us back above that slow speed line on the weekly time frame, puts us in the running for a recovery and a potential rise to a potentially even a higher high. Now, I don't want to talk, uh, stick my neck out too much further there, but you heard the insight yesterday. You saw it play out today. Powerful strategies coming from powerful tools with an objective cool hand rather than being very aggressive on either side. Uh, you've heard Rob say it, you know, you know uh, 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 bulls make money, bears make money, hogs get slaughtered. And uh, what we're looking for tomorrow is a market that has some additional risk that can play out pre-market uh, and or shortly into the cash hours open, and then looking for a potential bounce back up off of the rising supports. But we're going to be very, very well scrutinizing that 436 all the way down to 434 area on the spot. Now, you heard it yesterday. You saw it come to fruition today. You can go check yesterday's video, of course, to confirm the insights that I provided you. Uh, and I've let you know that I've lowered a little bit of my uh, bearish exposure uh, on long volatility type uh, products like UVXC or uh, uh, the like, and uh, did that in front of members today. Uh, the idea now is 
very active in the short term, looking for a market move where if a recovery plays out tomorrow from a dip and bounce, I've got the opportunity then to come to you and say, well, let's go take a look at the dollar. Same sort of thing that we did yesterday. And that dollar, which has uh, what can be termed as a gravestone doji, a big, big, big uh, wick and a, a very small body over there. Uh, the idea would be if we get a bearish type print from the jobs data, dollar goes up again. But then the expectation based on being in a major thicket of resistance would be it stalls out and potentially rolls down. There's an outside chance that we get a very bearish print tomorrow that breaks the dollar out, but that, that's a game changer overall, and that would have to be analyzed live. My thought process is, even if we get a bearish print, a push back up into all of that selling uh, wick over there, that's going to be a challenge in, of it, in and of itself, and all of that resistance to break above is going to be a challenge as well. So if we get a bearish print, a push up and then back down would be what I would be expecting, and that can open the door yet again for things that we discussed yesterday as potential opportunities like precious metals. Now, I'm not going to go and uh, pound the table on any of that until I've seen the data. It's an event risk, but it's it's uh, pretty good to see gold holding the center of its pivot range. And uh, with respect to silver, very much so uh, as well, uh, after, of course, coming down. And that was one of those risks that we identified in yesterday's video using powerful tools just like these that I'm going to be teaching you a lot more about how to use it on a multi time frame basis, how to use the signals for both swing and day trading. And there's going to be multiple touch points that uh, Rob and I are going to be speaking to you at from the summit next week. It is almost here. It starts on Monday. Get your seat and registration ready to go. Go to joinzia.com and uh, get your registration. I'll be speaking on Monday. Rob will be speaking on Monday. Multiple touch points throughout the week. And we've got lots of great insight tools debriefs on trades um, uh, with real live money trades uh, and much much more from uh, other incredible speakers as well uh, hope to see you there and hope you enjoyed uh, tonight's video and looking forward to uh, more in the future uh, big shout out from Rob to everyone listening in uh, he's just letting you know that he is he's working you know day and night to make sure that there's incredible value for you at this next wealth 365 summit and when he says stuff like that to me I, I know he means it because each summit's been better and better have a great rest of your day don't forget to register and we'll see you at videos just like these in the near future bye for now